myself like a student. Sometimes I even tend to forget my age and push to strive and uh, try to get that particular thing I want. So today's topic, we'll be talking on leveraging blockchain and other innovative technology. But before I actually go deep into, or even part of, before I start this um, presentation or whatever I'm about to say today, I just want to give you guys a little thing of what, or the kind of shake you I don't see for this one. In, okay, before I started speaking and everything in SS2 or so, when I was, I went to the Federal Government College in East Anambra State, grew up in Lagos and uh, some other things. So, that period, I said speaking, there was this woman that actually noticed I had this urge for, um, for technology, computer, and the rest. How many of you knows about school media? It's a, it's a, okay. You went to a federal government school, right? So in federal government colleges, there's these new organizations that have been introduced to the whole system called the school media. The school media is an organization that helps students or provides students with technologies like um, the laptops and some other things. So they can actually get to use it at their free time. Just like the ICT, just like the ICT lab works. But this time around, you get to, you can go there anytime you are free, learn one or two things and the rest. So then my mates or my seniors, the only thing they knew how to do there because they seized the Wi-Fi connection. People, students were not allowed to connect to the Wi-Fi because of, I don't know the main reason, but I don't, but they were not allowed. So then everybody was just, 3D paint, this, that, and that. But me, I actually worked in a cyber cafe after my primary six, in my anti cyber cafe that period. So after working there, I literally knew how to, know, how to do everything concerning the paints, WordPress, Excel, and all this. So then I actually wanted more. I wanted to know more. So then my dad's instructor, by name Mrs. Noma, she would see me going to command prompt on the laptop, even though I don't know what I was doing, but it looked cool, like the movies when people are hacking and doing some other things. She would warn me and be like, Chidi, stop going there. Do you know that you can spoil the PC and some other things? Then I know, that's why I'm going there. But then she warned and warned and warned me till the time she collected a PC and put a cello tape there and called it 17 and gave it to me and told me that that is not my new PC. No other student would be given access to that PC. I was surprised, I was like, what happened? She told me she wants to allow me to go deeper into tech. Then she gave me this, her, university notebook, though she did not learn it in university. According to her, she learned it from someone in the university. Learned how to develop and do some other things, cyber security. She gave me the notes and told me I should start working on it. I looked at this now, I was seeing codes and codes and codes. And I did not actually understand anything until she told me open notepad. Normal people, I mean, of us here to develop program and some other things. A program, a program, okay. So as a programmer, we all know VS Code, right? You know VS Code, you know VS Code. So VS Code is this um, source editor that allows us to put in codes and the computer give us back those codes as information. For instance, you want to develop your website application or some other things, use VS Code. VS Code is going to allow you to get, to get, um, to, you know, be able to put in your code. It's just like an interpreter. I speak English and you all are Chinese. I speak English, the Chinese interprets to what you guys understand. So when I put in my code, the VS Code automatically interprets it to either what a website is meant to look like, an application is meant to look like, an AI or whatsoever you are coding. So then I did not have the opportunity to use VS Code. I never knew that VS Code existed that period. Because there's this cheat in VS Code that once you put open bracket A, it's automatically going to predict the next line. It's now left for you to choose what you want if you recognize it. So then she made me use Notepad for reasons well known to her then. While using Notepad, it actually helped me in the sense I, by standing here and I can recite any code for you. You can bring in any code on a sheet of paper and I can tell you, yeah, this is what is used for, this is what is used for. But there are some other people that when they use VS code, not like they don't know those codes, but they won't be able to recognize it if you give, if you give it to them with some other codes that looked alike. So that period I was using Notepad and I knew exactly what every code was meant for. That period. Then it was not later. She told me there was something called VS Code. I was like, ah. ah. Then I opened VS Code. I found that it was even easier. Something I would spend three hours on. I could spend like one and a half hour, one and a half hour on that stuff using VS Code. But I just liked the fact that she wanted me to actually understand everything in the uh, in in the tech space or in that aspect of developing. But then she would give me these notes. Tell me I should just put any line there and save it with .html which is the normal 
thing everybody as a developer has to start with or is forced to start with. So that period, I will say with the same if I put GDLA or start for a bracket B, close the bracket, GDLA and then close the tag, put a closing tag. I'll see, wow, the word is bold. If I open my browser, it's going to look like bold. Like, okay, that's what I was doing, doing, change the background color, going, you know, trying everything one after the other. The time she now told me, oh yeah, she seized the notes. But then I already copied everything to another new note. I was this kind of person that never really had this interest in education. Not for, not because of I was dull. But then you could give me a note, sorry. You could, you could give me a note, this, this thing, probably, okay, let me use my hand just there. This thing to read for weeks, months. I could just open it to me, you know, be like, see, I did dull. I could open it first page, second page, third page. From there, that note is over. If you ask me, I'll tell you, say, I read. If I, what do you read? I, I might just recite that first page and other things for you. But this note that she gave me was as thick as this frame. Was as thick as this frame. And I compared everything in one night. I went through everything in one night, copied it to another note in one night. They're going through everything. My break time then, anyway, I was, I grew up with a very strict dad. My dad was this, there's no saying no hold though, but you go tell you, you understand shake away and go through when you small. Because then he was, he grew up in a poor family and some other things. So then, if we're going back to school, give us one sachet, uh, these are uh, one kg conflicts, milk, sugar, tea, go to school. Then Gary was banned because we had eye um, sight problem and some other things. So that's the little thing. And those things used to finish two weeks. They don't finish. Come my pop singer. Then I meet your guy. And my guy was, then was a very strict woman. She would tell us she would only give us 200 naira every week. Once a week, every Wednesday, you would come and collect 200 naira. That 200 naira, nobody say you go fit do anything. So by the don't finish that period. So then break time was not actually for me. So I used my break, went to the school media, was always there. To the extent she started telling me, oh yeah, come and teach these people. There's this new stuff that you are meant to present. You are going to present it to from GS1 to SS3. And then I was in SS2, like my senior. To the extent, if I clap, if I get on the stage, I'll be shaking. And some of that is, even though I started talking on stage when I was small as a special number in church and some other things. But that period, I would look at my presentation because there was a big screen like this. I look at my presentation, look at the crowd. I would say that senior that used to bully me in school. Say, no man overdo. Man, still, I say me too. I still be a timid guy. But they would start, they look me like, say, this one too, don't they overdo because they see senior. So then I'll just be reciting, not like I did not understand it, but I could not present all those things with, or because of fear. Then after some time, I started understanding that all these things, you know, when you get on stage, the main thing is everybody's expecting to deliver, not really to fumble. So even though you fumble, just very few people notice it, and they actually applaud you because you're able to, you know, overcome all those fear and some other things. So from there, I started teaching my seniors, my juniors, got to SS3, Wayek thought it could overcome me, but I was still going to that school media. They banned all SS3. They restricted all SS3 from going to the school media, but I was the only person she allowed then. I went for competitions with school media representing the eastern part of Nigeria. I don't think there was a day I went second in all of them. I was happy. But to the extent, some of my teachers, like my physics teacher, he would look at me and be like, Chidile. So if you carry a word, if you go represent our school, carry a word. But you know, if you get A for your physics, I look at him, I'll tell him, sir, and I'm interested. He uh, will look at me because then I was very close with my, um, my class teachers because of my small age and small stature then. So he, they knew they used to bully me. So once they bully me, I'll run to their office and be crying. You know, go even feel report senior because when you call senior name like now, nah, senior solar bullying me, teacher go look. He's not true. He does not used to bully. Because then they're afraid of the student. If they do me, stay in that house, stay. Ha. If you know, come out. Uh. So that period, I'll run to their office, just cry, they'll buy things for me and all those things. But that's how I became very close with them and some other things. I became better in the thing I actually found interest. So over to this leveraging stuff. Okay, I'm not done. When I got to the university year, and some other things, I was all about making money, making money. Even before I got to the university, after my SS3, I started working as a primary school teacher, getting around 10,000 every month teaching two classes, primary three, primary two. I know primary schools are cat and rats. Then this one, stand up, you go to the next class. Before you come back, they're already making noise. Everybody should raise up your hand. And me, I'm not the kind of person that will see juniors and start beating them. And me, sir, I'll be waiting, I suffer for school now. So if I look at them, the only thing was headache. 
And then the principal, not be say the principal no one pay me. Let me say the principal no one pay me all those this thing, but he feels like if I pay him now, you know, a small boy waiting there is ten, waiting there is fifteen thousand dollars, thirty k. Then I was all suffering, and I never had idea that all those people were actually making that much money. After that period, I started working in a travel agency. I quit the job because it was actually messing up my mental health. We just started working in a travel agency. <laughs> what I love. So, started working with the travel agency and some other things. Got to school, had to quit that one too because you can't be working with a, a business that is in Lagos and some other things. My travel agent's business, they were paying me 30000 naira. Then I was also happy. Because then I, I was not actually thinking about food and some other things. I was just thinking clothes. My mom said, Pop 6 said, go provide food, all those ones. When I got to the school, everything was hard again. My Pop C then was facing a little bit of financial crisis. So I had to, you know, find out to do my things and everything. From there, I, the first way I knew I could make money was starting agent work. Then I'll call my fellow 100 levels and I'll be like, you define us there, all those things. Come and meet me. Take you here, do this one, do this one. You pay me 2K for every time I'm carrying you around. If you don't choose today, I'll tell you, it's better you come tomorrow. That tomorrow, I'll tell you, can't, that's what can't. That's what I was doing, gathering money, finished my clearance and some other things. Then I was the kind of person that my auntie would send me 2,000 naira. And I will kneel down and be thanking God for actually talking to my auntie. A few weeks ago, I just remember the stuff in my mouth. I was like, wow, no tears. So the tech space is a kind of space, unlike, okay, I, I said something, I told Ms. Amarachi here about some, a friend of mine that is a graphics designer. Many of us here would know graphics designers make their money from designing, uh, designing flyers or things for people. And those flyers, they could charge as much as 5,000 naira for churches. Because now church be their main, the main place that they do. So if church charge, charge them like they like, ah, 5K, church no go open door because you're offering pass them. They go pay them ASAP. The guy said go to the ball. They feel like three flyers in one month, which is 15K. But I know someone that charges as much as $5,000 every week to make one flyer. To make a flyer. That is $5,000 and he's working with over 50 something projects. So imagine $5,000 times how many of these things. It's not exactly five. You could charge less, I could charge higher. You could do anything. And $5,000 now is what and 7 point something million there per week. A week charging that so to show you that if you can offer this your skills in the tech space companies are waiting to pay you i started off as a developer a com the first person i did i worked for was in nigeria the guy i he told me what he wanted i told him it was seven hundred thousand. he told me no lie lie you know an evil man now let me say you no know, 50 100k i told him okay what is your budget he told me fifty thousand. told him son no it's not possible what you want needs a lot of fund support and some things that because not my money will go use run all these things for you and i also need workmanship I was like, and this one down, yeah, remove this one, remove that one, remove this one, remove that one. How much is it? I told him, okay, 200,000. He told me, no, let me give you 100. I look, look, look. I said, then Sapa, I told him, no, Wahala. What I just did, I had to, um, no, I had to, uh, I just had to compromise. I had to use a lot of things. I had to compromise a lot of things and put from here to there to there. This is why I pass, pass what I do for the website, but thank God he paid. But foreign clients, that same website, I've worked with projects, or I've worked with companies in India, Belarus, Canada, and some other places that charge those. For that website I built for him, there was a company that needed something exactly like that, like an e-commerce website, something like Jumia, but a smaller version. They built it for twenty-four thousand dollars. Twenty-four thousand dollars. Then they are now charging ten thousand dollars every month for workmanship and for maintenance and some of that. Meaning, if you wake up this morning, be like, I don't like the color. Hello, how much? You are going to pay ten thousand dollars. For that so imagine me I, when i actually started working with that company i was like wow so now me they fool myself since since after that time i promised myself if you're a nigerian and you know say so you know get money if i give you price you know want come out you can always because of 100 can now move me small i know the possible so we now have the community so you have to actually be in communities and network with people networking with people allows you i also told um I'm actually about the time I then I, okay I worked on this application is live is live now called Cheap Plan V2. Many of you might have seen it in UNN here. Cheap Plan V2 is a is a is an application that allows you to buy data and some other things for very cheap. You could see one gig that will last you for a month. Meanwhile, normal MTN if you use your normal USSD code, you won't get it. It might last for 24 hours, 14 days, depending on how long. But in this my app, I got access to the Cheap Plan to the APIs, the vendor APIs directly from MTM provider, service provider. So they gave it to me and I was able to make my website MTN, Ethel, Glow, Etisalat, 
any name any Nigerian okay now for so I was able to get these APIs worked on my application after working on my application the day I launched it I went for an event which was blockchain UNN last year that event I was I'm happy that many of us here many of the speakers here were very shy people then I was very shy to the extent if I come around okay if nobody say now me and you talk directly no problem but then I was very shy to say if I go to conferences I would sit down at the back even though space still there for front, sit at the back and be quiet till I see someone I know. Then I used to that person I know and talk to other people that they know and know, you know, just like that. But that day, I just promised my, when they said stand up and network, I was sitting down, I was looking at my app. I was happy that day because it's been very long I started working on that app. Looking at my app, looking up, looking at my, I said, no, I must stand up. The first person I met, told him, good afternoon, sir. I'm Chidi Lo I'm a, I'm an application developer. I'm, I work on, I'm a developer for, applications, websites, and some other things, AR, ML, and the rest. It was like, really? And I said, I would like to know you. The man told me, so have you ever considered working on a, with a company before? I told him, yes, sir. The man told me, so have you? I told him, no. And I said, do you have any work proof? So if I said, why the women came in your name and some other things? Do you have any work proof? I told him, yes, I opened my application, they gave him my phone. I was going, I was like, wow. So you mean you made this? I told him, yes, sir. I just launched it today. He told me, nice. So I'm going to send you some contact, this one down. I tell you, sir, no, send the person my contact. Because when you send me his contact and I chat him, it looks like I'm desperate. So the person chatted me up immediately. I, my phone vibrated, but I don't really check him. It was not later, when I went outside to unit, I checked my phone. Because I wanted to call my mommy and tell her I recently launched the app. Because the one that supported me with, I think, 50,000 I used to host that application. I opened the app. I opened my phone, saw a message from a foreign number, plus 44 something something. The person that told me, he needs so, so so kind of website, just a landing page, though, but his specification was very simple to do. Let me need the website up and running in 48 hours. My heart skip. So 48 hours. The only thing I did, I stayed in that event for like extra 5-10 minutes. I had to go home. I told the person, okay, I should send me this, send me that, send me this, so I'll start working on the website. And I told him that he should not expect me to code it, because if I'm expected to code it, it's going to take me longer than 48 hours to do it. So I'll do something else and later work on the main one. I'll do something like WordPress and there. told me no problem. You just need the website up and running. After working on the website, he chatted, I chatted him up and told him, sir, we've not actually talked on the price. He told me so how much. Then I remembered the thing that actually fucked me up with that um, primary school stuff was when the man called me, he asked me how much do you want us to pay? You didn't interview. He said 10,000 now. Then 10,000, I never even seen him for my accounts before. The man told me no problem. So then I remember the thing I said, no, man, no tell him price. Then I was only thinking 500k. I was going to price, price, price. I enter 100k because then something small value. And I told the man, sir, how much? The man now told me, um, can I accept $1,500? I looked at him. <laughs> then that, in my mind, I, I thought it was actually a mistake. I thought, I said, sir, you say 1,005. He told me, yes. Is it too small? I told him, yes. One eight. The man told me, the man told me, no. That, uh, okay, I told him 2k. I meant to say. And I told me, no. That is one eight is going to pay me. I told him, sir, no, I can't collect one eight. That is an urgent work. This one, that one, that one. Tell me, no problem. Send me your wallet address. Like, play, like, play. I sent him my wallet address. That day, I thought I was dreaming, honestly. I was looking at my phone and waiting for this alert to enter. I was sitting down. To the extent I slept off. Immediately, I woke up. I saw the man was asking me, have you received it? This one, that one. And then I did not know now because I slept off. And then I saw my trust wallet. Um, USDT, something, something confirmed. I looked at my wallet because I configured my wallet to be... Um, to be showing in Naira instead of BTC or USDT. Looking at my wallet, was looking at my life. I said, sir, don't tell me Lonia like this. <laughs> I took this phone, I, I took a screenshot immediately. I sent it to my mom. I told my mom not to tell my dad, because then my dad know they really understand what to be tech. If you see money for tech, if you be a, someone will focus on only tech, he believe say you be Yahoo boy. So then I believed you would have already judged me as a Yahoo guy or something like that. So I looked at this phone, I was like, ah. I sent the man the login details to everything. Told him he can take over free maintenance for the rest of the year. I was not charging anything. That day I went to the man. Okay, that day I converted. I went on YouTube, learned how to convert your your USDT to naira and some other things. After learning and watching and watching videos, I converted everything and sent the money to my wallet, to my access bank. For me to go outside and notice that okay, I went. To, I checked this access bank here. Yeah. Wanted to withdraw five k that I would use as transfer money to. Because then I wanted to use Okada now, no keke. So that day I reached access my notes, they blocked my account. Because 50k don't pass on. They know I'll be broke kid. Now why they limit them to 50k? That day I ran straight to Access Bank. They were about closing. I begged the security man, I told him that I'm not feeling fine. I feel die in the next five minutes if I don't get money to 
Listen, the man has told me, oh, enter, 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 but now because it's a health issue, you don't understand, say, you didn't choke me. I mean, like, enter there, I begged the woman, please, ma, can you help me with this thing? They blocked my guy. Told me, go to UBA where you did your BVN. Tell them to do this one, do that one, do that one. I looked at time, it's already after four. It's like, I begged this, like, I was begging this woman, and I begged, and I told this, and I begged the security man that was there, and begged the man, and I was like, I beg, so I think, get into it, go, if you do my wrong, you something. Man told me no problem. Say man, I give him um, some. So the, the last two k in my OP, even though I was not sure it would work, but I was happy because the money already did my access. I used the last two k, sent it to the man for my OP. The man begged the secretary. The secretary now later did this. I don't know how she did it, but they upgraded my account and told me I can now send and receive any amount I want. She's the other. I just walked out of the bank. <laughs> Went to the market, bought my new PC, bought a new phone, bought everything. I'm this kind of person. I'm not the see money and chop immediately. Except I know say that money not go fill on anything. I go chop up. But once I know, no I get goals. That is me. I have goals that I have to. And so I already told myself, because I used to borrow laptops from my set mates that they always used to play game or watch film. I'll beg them for their laptop for like a week or so. I'll be working on what I can do and some other things. I went to my guy, I told him, guy, I found no verse. Give me your PC. I might give you like 10k and something. I was still stingy then. But I gave him 10k. He gave me his PC that week. I started Okay, that, that was when I worked on that stuff. Went to the market, bought a new PC, bought a new phone, bought a new mouse, bought everything that I knew would work me, that is, would help me to work better. First of all, I believe many of us here must have heard of the blockchain and some other things. How many of us know about the blockchain? Okay, thank God. From here? Blockchain, okay, very few. Anyways, the blockchain, you might not have, you might not have heard about the blockchain, but many of us have heard about cryptocurrencies here. Exactly, Bitcoin and Dan. So, the blockchain is actually a secured, decentralized ledger known for its transparency, security, and immutability. Meaning, the blockchain is actually, well, okay, all of us know what the ledger is. The ledger is actually a book where transactions are being stored. So, this blockchain is actually an advanced kind of book or an advanced kind of transaction book where people can actually store other things. Like I said, it's known for its transparency, security, and immutability. The transparency because of this book, unlike the normal book on the only person we get access from now the secretary or for the company that has that ledger. But unlike that one, everybody actually has access to this ledger. Meaning, if I have five bitcoin in my wallet, all you need to know that I have five bitcoin in my wallet is just my wallet address. But you can't access my wallet. That's why it's actually safe. That's the security, that's where security comes in. You cannot have my, like you can't assess my money except I give you access. And sometimes you hear somebody will say, I was doing this thing, or they hack my wallet and all those things. Those hacking of wallets are because of they got to get into some illegal or some kind of, like say, Ponzi scheme, where some websites are being configured to actually look like, so, okay, for instance, we all go to our um, UNM portal now and we click on, probably put in your login password, your email, your login password, and click on sign in for you to get access to of us. Now, this scam project that would hack your wallet will also create something like that. But instead of you knowing that it's a form, they might put something like putting your, you know, your wallet seed phrase, this one, that one. And instead of, you know, it's not going to look like a sign up form. It's going to look like something else, not making you now know that they're actually getting access to your work stuff. Then you click on the sign in. That sign in might not be like sent to their email. The back end might be a send. Sending those secret phrase to them and then getting as them now getting access to your wallet and now you know the other way now, the most advanced way is now if we've done airdrops, how many of us have done airdrop? Legitimate airdrop will not telegram. Okay. If you've done airdrops before, for instance, when if you go on when you see uh you go and check if you're eligible, if you're eligible, they'll tell you, okay, so 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 amount is um is dedicated to you there's also amount of when which is what around 200 dollars 100 dollars i don't know so when you go there you will not see where they will click on claim that claim could not be cons could not be configured to something else that could be a send and now there's something we call a signature in the blockchain industry that signature is what for instance now for you to open your phone you need a fingerprint or a password so that signature is something that's going to pop up on your phone and tell you do you really give access to this social so, so blockchain or for this transaction to perform? Which you thinking is actually a claim for an airdrop and you click on um, sign or sign transaction, that money is gone. So it's just configured and everything. So that's why you have to be safe. 
There's this now where we step people into the blockchain industry. You have two wallets. Have one that's your main wallet and have a burner wallet. A burner wallet is something you used to do airdrops and some other ones and some other kind of things in the blockchain industry or interact with the blockchain. So that if they wanted to have access, there's nothing in your burner wallet. It's on your burner wallet. So that when you get anything, if there's any legitimate one in your burner wallet, you send it to your main wallet. You understand? So now, the overview of innovative technologies today. Many of us think technologies is just something that battery or battery goes through and some other things like that. Actually, innovative technologies are type things that make us live better. That's why the word innovative is there. Something that makes us live better, for instance, this light now is a kind of technology. It makes us not have to have very bright lights around this place to get a very clean, clear shot of the, of the um, photo or video being taken. So um, we have new kind of this thing, have, um, new kind of technologies, for instance, artificial intelligence, AI, personal chat, GPT, Bing AI, and the rest. We know uh, Internet of Things, the smart devices, smart cities. For instance, I don't know if you've seen, you know, of us here are new to the blockchain industry, but in the blockchain industry, there's this thing called, um, you know the way we buy land? For you to get a land in, normally, you, you have to meet an agent. The agent have to take you to the place. You have to sign this, pay this, pay that. Then you get the CEO of code, and now automatically makes it yours. So, for instance, now these smart cities or this um, this thing, they're actually virtual lands, virtual cities that cost a lot of money. A whole city, for instance, okay, I just, you know how games have been built now? Games, you see, there you go to this land, conquer the king, collect this one, blah, blah, blah. Those kind of things now, they are built like that. For instance, they're actually real estate businesses. They have to use cryptocurrency to claim. Then when you probably you go there, you sign a transaction, you buy a land there. That land keeps increasing over time, just the same way our land here increases over time. This is a smart city. Instead of me going to I, I am Abia State now, like for instance, I have um, some lands in a this thing in a real estate company called the Portable. So that the Portable, my friend now might be like, ah, I, I get three lands in Abia. I'll be like, I get three lands in the Portable. People know Sabi and go look me like that. Be more. That is the thing with this much with this matching. But the money there is really nice because it just works like a real world asset, making our money just like the mainland, making our money increase over time. Though it's not immediately, but it's also nice. It could actually happen immediately because the blockchain, this thing. I know many of us have had that. Probably you woke up one morning, you had, ah, Bitcoin rise, oh, everybody got happy. That rise has been affected by us. So the blockchain industry or the Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, them gang, are actually affected by us. So they are decentralized um, assets. They are affected by us, unlike the traditional assets like Naira, dollar, euro, pounds, and the rest. The euro, pound, naira, dollar are being affected by the government. If government does nonsense now, like the way we are seeing Shege with our naira and USDT, very soon dollar figures enter 2K or something like that. If not, that's Nigeria now is trying to take small this thing, precautions to avoid that from happening. So unlike that, the USDT or the virtual Bitcoin and the rest of, okay, not USDT, USDT is a stable coin, but the virtual Bitcoin and the rest have been affected by all of us. There's no government, it's decentralized, meaning there's nobody at the top there controlling all those things. So it's decentralized in the sense that I affect it, you affect it, everybody affects it. Many of us here must have seen traders, if not that we are traders. Many of us here must have seen traders. For instance, traders, they make their money from people who buy and who sell. That's why you see a green going up, meaning people are buying. You see a red coming down, meaning people are selling. That's the same way. If everybody in this place now should buy, probably I create a token, a token called Made for More, M4M. That M4M would not have any value because it doesn't have any liquidity. So for instance, everybody here buys $10 worth of M4M. It automatically adds those $10 to the liquidity, now giving it liquidity to rise. Meaning that token is sure to rise because everybody here bought it. If one person should sell, it's going to go down a bit. If another person sells, it's going to go down a bit. That's why sometimes you hear Elomox sold Bitcoin, Bitcoin fell. Why? Because Elomox is a whale. It's what we call whale. Whales are people who actually have the people who actually have the um, biggest amount of uh, this thing, cryptocurrency in that place. As I currently now, some chains are trying to restrict people from having too much, um, too much tokens. And you can't have more than 10 million tokens now. I could, I could make it possible now. But then where Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is actually the first cryptocurrency that was ever legalized or ever brought to the community or anything to the world. So that's... Um, that thing now, probably Elon Musk has the biggest amount of 
this thing, why all of us now have just one one USDT? Why all of us has 6,000 USDT? If it sells that 6,000 USDT, it's removed from the liquidity, not giving it a lower value. That's why it could sell at that instant because it's a wave, meaning it has a huge, a bigger amount. Then augmented reality and VR. VR, we know VR is for games and some other things. Then augmented reality are being used in the healthcare industry. For instance, is this um, company I got to work with last year. They make this kind of glass. I don't know if many of us must have heard about the Apple Vision Pro that just really got released. So that is actually an augmented reality mixed with a virtual reality kind of stuff. So augmented reality makes it possible. For instance, I put on that glasses. I could look at this, probably it's an answer sheet. Look at this without seeing anything. I could look at it and it's going to actually give me everything. So this medical one that I worked with last year, they made this kind of vision probe um, glasses that if someone should have an heart attack, and I look at the person, it's automatically tell me, give the person CPR, do this one, do that one, lift the person's hand. And if I don't lift the person's hand, it's going to continue telling me till I lift that person's hand. That's how good technology has actually come into today's system. So the next slide. There are now um, the importance of blockchain and innovative technology in today's world. Next one. The, okay, we have these current applications and the thing we are looking to make possible in the future. For instance, this current application like the finance, I've already mentioned about the cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Solana. For instance, you can look here, you can see the Bitcoin sign, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, BNB, also known as BNB. So it's used in the finance industry. You can, you, you, most of us are part of DeFi. DeFi is also a kind of cryptocurrency, but it's different because this one is actually focused on the financial aspect. Then the healthcare industry, um, supply chain and some other things so not only in bitcoin like i said bitcoin everybody can know how much bitcoin i have because it's transparent and some other things and that's where the blockchain comes in so the blockchain is very wide to the extent that to the extent that it has both it has the currency part covered medical part covered and some other things so this healthcare industry now for instance unlike now well now if you would want to go and do something probably you have a medical emergency, they might actually have to get your health card or they'll start running another test on you for them to be able to know what blood group, where you were born, or the hospital they gave birth to you and all those things. But if, currently, we actually have things like that now. So just imagine you went to a hospital for emergency, this thing, and you just looked at you, got your name or your address, put it on this, this thing, they already got, have your information there. Just imagine how easier it would be. Instead of costing money again to go and start doing tests and some other things, that's where it comes in, the, the supply chain. I don't know if we've seen people who have other things from AliExpress. AliExpress, other things on Jimmy at all. Okay. If you've other things at all, you'll notice when you order something, you're going to be given a unique ID code. That unique ID code can be used to track your product. You get to know when it has been packaged, when it has been, uh, when it's in transit and some other things. Even people with the other OP um, okay card, you will notice that. So now the future potentials, not like we can't do it. But it's because of the government now are trying to fight cryptocurrency. That's why they've not really allowed us to be able to achieve. There are actually a lot, but these are just the two main ones. For example, government voting system identity verification. Remember I said blockchain is transparent, secured, and is immutable. I, I, immutable, yeah, I'm correct. So that immutable means it can't be, you cannot alter anything. Once I launch a smart chain now, for instance, I put... 15 BNB up, meaning the only amount of BNB in the world now is 15. And you guys can only buy that 15. You cannot, you know, get what you want to do to go edit them or do anything so that it can turn to 20 and some other things. You can't also hack me. You, I cannot send, I can't send any amount I no get. You grab all like these fake transfers now that we have, or probably some uploads in websites or this, this stuff now. I could go back to the file, edit this stuff so it can look some, you know, a different, in a different way. But it's not, it doesn't work like that in the blockchain industry or in the cryptocurrency aspect. That's why governments are trying... For instance, we know what they do for P2B and Tinubu now. That they edited everything. Don't put them online. But they edited everything and... You understand now, the vote actually went to P2B, but... Baba won. <laughs> so, if this thing was possible, if they could actually integrate the blockchain industry or the blockchain into voting, it's not possible. In fact, you know what they want them. I, would, I feed in my house. I can vote from my house. Everybody can vote from their houses and still see how it's rising and still see how everything is working from, our, from, or from the comfort of our homes. And then the energy aspect, the decentralized energy grid, pay to pay energy trading, and some other things. I don't understand that one. Next one. 
then skill and knowledge for the future. In the technical or in the technology field, we have two different kind of skills. We have the hard or the technical skills and the soft skills. So the hard skills is where you see blockchain, programming language, and some other things. For example, understanding of Ethereum smart contracts and DAP. That means decentralized applications. Decentralized applications are applications, like I said, decentralization. Decentralization or decentralized decentralism is when there's no authority over something. For instance, we're using um, Binance or let me use Access Bank for instance. Access Bank is centralized because if Access decides to close today, their app not will work again. True or false? If UNN2 decides to close their portal today, the app not will work again or the website not will work again. But if it's decentralized, meaning everybody actually has a say in what is happening. Everybody has a say in what is happening on that application. If the application is going to undergo any changes, it has to be from us and every other thing. So that is how good the decentralized application is. The understanding Ethereum, Ethereum is actually the first thing to um, allow people to be able to, you know, the first ecosystem to allow users to be able to create other tokens. We've heard of, I don't know if you know that, you, okay, you've heard of Solana before. How many of us have heard of Solana, of Ethereum? Common ones, yeah. Okay, um, Binance. We've heard of Binance now. Okay, yeah. So under that Binance, we have other kind of currencies. So we actually have two different type of currencies, or two different kind of currencies, yeah. We have the coin and we have the token. The coins are the ecosystem. For instance, I have Solana now, Binance now. Binance is the main Odogo, is the main Oga. It's just like building a land now. This is Enugu, true, yes. Then in Enugu, we have Osuka. Then in this Nsuka now, Nsuka is now a token. Enugu is a coin. Enugu is the ecosystem where it is built on. For instance, if we've done any transaction on Trust Wallet, Metamax, and the rest, we'd notice we can't probably get an airdrop or you get something like that. Or someone send you dollars to your, um, to, probably USDT to your wallet. You cannot transfer that USDT to another person without, probably it's under the BNB smart chain or BSC smart chain. You can't transfer it without BNB, if you've noticed. That's because BNB is now... It's the ecosystem where it's laid on. That's the coin where they built Solana. If this is the same thing, if they should build it on Tron, on TRX, TRX, you can't transfer it without Tron. Tron is the gas fee. They won't charge you USDT for the gas fee. Then that is where, um, okay, Ethereum was the first. Then, uh, what was I saying? Ethereum is the first. Ethereum is Enugu. Osuka is a token that is built on it. Meaning, if I should create a token now under Ethereum or under Enugu and name it M4M. It becomes a token of Ethereum, of BNB, one way or another, sabi. Then the programming language, solidity for smart contracts, Python, and some other distance. So in the technical space, this is just the ones concerning the blockchain. Python is actually used outside the blockchain, the Web 2 and Web 3. Listen. So, so uh, solidity is the newest kind of uh, coding or programming that is related to creating smart contracts, tokens, and the rest. This. Uh, okay, we also know ones like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, Node.js, that one, this and that. That is programming language. Then the soft skill, critical thinking, problem solving in the tech space, adaptability, long life, okay, lifelong learning mindset. This is where traders come in. Traders know they stress themselves, you understand? Traders know they stress themselves at all. If you, they are critical thinkers. They know how to analyze the markets to make things, you know, to make things or to put, they know when to put their money into the market after analyzing. So they think far. Us here, our own is just wake up, dollar don't enter one seat. So someone already knew to enter one seat yesterday and put all his money in it and bought it and now waited. When he entered one seat, he sold his money and now has probably two times, three times his money. So that is how this critical thinking is. So for all of you here that don't know, let me just tell you now. In the tech space, not be everybody they find developer. If you think that you cannot be in the tech space because you don't know how to develop, make apps, do this one, do that one. It's a lie. In the web, in the web three or in the tech space, we're actually looking. We're also looking for people like project managers, marketers, the rest. So if you know you can think and do other things that you feel people, normal people, are actually hard to listen to find. It's it's going to be or it's, it's a kind of skill, it's a soft skill because you don't have to deal with the you know the hard aspect of it. Next, next slide. So opportunities and challenges, next slide. 
So communities and networking and uh, ethical consideration and challenges. So communities and networking. Communities and networking is a very crucial aspect of the tech space if you want to make it. In the tech space, we have two kinds of mindsets, people entering into the tech space. For instance, people just finish SS3 and many of us here. We have this mindset that I'm going to the tech space to make money. That make money now, now makes us vulnerable to Ponzi schemes and a lot of things. So we lose a lot of money with that. But you can join communities. You see emerging roles, like they give updates. They see job offers, airdrops, some other things. And we have the ethical consideration and challenges we have in the blockchain industry. Because of the information that's being collected and some other things, people tend to you know, lose it. Next slide. My time is done. So now we have the engaging, okay, engaging with ecosystems. Next one. So now we have the career opportunities. Eco, engaging with ecosystems. Blockchain is so advanced to the, extent, to, the extent, or to the extent that people like all of us now can actually make things or make things better. For instance, I built a website. Now let me get access. If I want to change anything for that website, now me, you grab. But blockchain is so advanced to the extent that I could, or you could go to the GitHub of any blockchain this thing go to the GitHub, put something you like there or not anything no, but it has to be really nice you put anything or you can code add your own idea to the stuff to make it more advanced when you do that you automatically get or once it gets approved it changes immediately you grab it changes the whole blockchain stuff because everybody now nothing saying now just one team build ethereum solana then except bitcoin we now only satoshi nakamura Nakamoto, nobody knows that man. But I believe it's a team of people that actually did it. But till today, that's why sometimes you hear and be like, Solana just updated their, um, their ecosystem that it can work on this, work on that. Nobody says Solana team do one. Nah, people like me and you do one. So the next slide, okay, the real world project. The real world projects like contributing to the open source project, like I said, now you can go on GitHub, contribute and do some other things, meet um, people, go meet, um, attend local meetups, like this is not a local meetup, this is a tech conference. So you can attend places like this, connect with people. You see what things people are doing. Do like, have something like that. Even though you don't get proof, try to gain your trust. Because later in the future, they will try to remember you. So next slide. OK, this is the end of my slide, but the beginning of your journey in the tech space. Thank you very much.